Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man. As you can probably tell by the title and the fact that you're staring into the crock pot, we're doing some hot process soap. I haven't done hot process in a long time and I'm ready to do it again. This is my hot process recipe, which is listed below. You're welcome to use it. You don't have to use any specific recipe just for hot process. If you have a cold process recipe you really like, it will work just fine for hot process. The only thing I recommend is do not do any type of water discount because you're going to lose a lot by cooking and you want to keep it as fluid as possible. So for this, in the main soap, yes I am doing two different batches, the main color is going to be Fire Cider from Nurture Soap which is a beautiful, beautiful copper color. So what I'm going to do is mix this up, get a basic emulsion, pour some of this off into a crock pot I have behind here, a smaller one, and I'm going to use titanium dioxide in that and cook two different batches at the same time, and hopefully they'll cook at a same or similar rate. I'm going to fragrance this with farmhouse cider from Crafter's Choice. This is one that behaves abominably in cold process. It's just like seconds away from seizing, but this is an issue with hot process. Now, I used this a few weeks ago and blended it with a non-accelerating fragrance and it was manageable but by itself it really moves but it's not a problem in hot process so I'm not worried about it so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my line to this now there's just a little bit of lard still there that hasn't melted but when I get this scalding hot lye in it it won't matter another thing with hot process temperatures do not matter you're gonna cook it and bring it up to temperature why do you cool it down only to wait for it to come back up so these are very hot oils this is very hot scalding lye I'm getting ready to put in because it does not matter with hot process. So here we go. This is scalding hot lye water. And that is full water, no discount. So let's bring this to emulsion, then I will pour some off into the other crock pot and get the cook started. And I'll get the colors mixed in as well. Alright, so there's a basic stable emulsion. So let's get this into our little crock pot. Very carefully. Hopefully that's okay, yes, I can handle that. And I really don't want to fill that any more than half full. Because I want to leave plenty of room for it to expand because it will need it. So get this back into the base. It is starting to get pretty hot. So let's get our colors in. Let's start with the white. Which you really can't see. There you sort of can. And since this is going to be really well blended, I'm just going to put the titanium dioxide right in. I'm not worried about extra water. I'm not worried about a high amount of TD because you won't get glycerin rivers in hot process because it's always being stirred and you're even stirring it when you put it into the mold. So let's get that TD mixed in real well. stable emulsion. So let's get this guy back into his crock pot. Let him start cooking. And let's get some of this beautiful fire cider into the other one. I think about three should do. Well, that is nice, Mike. I like that. Let's bring you back over here.
is good. So I will clean up the mess I made and put the lid on and we'll start the cooking. I will bring you back along some of the various stages. See you in a bit. All right, here are first signs. We're just starting to cook. So you can just on the little one, just barely see around the edges where it's starting to bubble up. That means it's starting to cook. And here on the big one, you can really see it there where it's starting to cook. So I'm not gonna do anything now. I'm just gonna leave it and let it do its thing for a while. So I'll be back. Okay, we're at the stage where we gotta watch it closely and keep it stirred. Cause see that, it will overflow. That's why you never want to fill your crock pot more than half full, and you never, ever want to leave it unattended. Now, if this white one cooks just a little bit slower than the other one, that's actually okay, because this one's going to take longer. So I'm going to turn this one down to low and leave the big one on high. And I'll bring you over here. We are officially at what's called the apple stage phase because it looks like or applesauce because it looks like applesauce and it will stay at this stage for a while while it does most of the cook so you just got to watch it and stir it down every once in a while calm it down but it will eventually come back together and it'll be at the mashed potato stage so i'll bring you back when we get to that point All right, once again, this is why you never leave hot process unattended. Because you got to stir it down and get that air out of it. Now we have entered the mashed potato phase. We've gotten out of the applesauce, which means it has cooked and come back together. And it's actually starting to get glossy and shiny. So when it stops climbing, it'll be finished. It'll also be really glossy, which means it's in full, full gel phase, which means we're almost there. And here's the white one. I've already stirred it. But it's cooking just fine, too, so we'll have soap in just a little while. Okay, so this one is finished cooking. I've gone ahead and taken it out of the crock pot, or out of the base, the heat base, but it's all shiny and glossy which means we are at full gel phase. Now this phase is completely optional, but a lot of people who make hot process like to add sodium lactate at the end. And sodium lactate, all it does is help keep it fluid just a little bit longer. It's completely optional. You don't have to do it, but it keeps it fluid and more workable and helps it get into the mold easier. I'm going to leave the white one cooking just a little bit longer, which is good because this one will take longer to cool down and I'm not ready to put the fragrance in yet. So I'm just going to give this a good stir. I'm going to let that white crock pot cook just a little bit longer and cook the white soap a little bit longer. I'll pull it out and add sodium lactate to it. And when this cools down to a reasonable temperature, I'll bring this back, I'll fragrance it, we'll get it swirled into the mold. Okay, we're ready to fragrance this. It's down to about 170. I'm pretty comfortable with that, but I want you to look and see how fluid this still is. Just look at that, how gloopy and gloppy it is. Sodium lactate has a lot to do with that. It's going to make it a lot easier to mold. So fragrance, I usually take just kind of partial. Uh, stir part of it in instead of all at once because it takes a lot of stirring but your soap will absorb it just kind of fold it and stir it and fold it so I'll speed this part up because it's going to take a long time actually I'll probably just go ahead and shut this down I'll be right back because it's going to take a long time to get all this stirred into here so I will be back when we're ready to mold it okay that fragrance really brought the temperature down considerably I debated whether or not to mix this in the mold or mix this in the pot. I think I'm going to mix this in the pot because i got to move kind of fast now. So we'll just get all of this moved into here. And it's thick enough. I don't think it will blend too much. If I get it somewhat stirred in here into the pot, just kind of fold it a little bit to get the colors mixed and swirled. And then when I move it into the mold, Where you can 
see it. There we go. Yeah, I think that was the right thing to do. Rather than to try to mix it in the mold. So I just start plopping this in. And then when I get a good layer, I'm going to smack it on the floor to flatten it out. Yeah, mixing it in a crock pot was definitely the thing to do, I can tell already. And smack her down. And I kind of like the rustic top on hot process. Not everybody does, but a couple of things. There'll be no glycerin rivers, even with all that water and all that TD, there will be no, uh, no ashing on top because there's no lye in that, it's already cooked. So those are a couple of benefits. No glycerin rivers, no lye, no uh, ash on top, and you can take a fragrance that behaves abominably in cold process and use it in hot process. So, I will let this sit tonight and I'll cut it tomorrow. Thanks for watching everybody, bye! Okay, it's the next day and it is time to cut our hot process soap. And I'm really digging this method of swirling. It looks nice and swirled, marbled. I haven't peeked yet, so let's see it together. Oh yeah. Actually looks like a nice marbled steak. Or a piece of natural marble, depending on how you look at it. Marble steak, who knows, but I like it. So let's get some bars cut and see what we have. But I think that's how I'm gonna do hot process from here on. Yeah, very nice. Very happy with that. And I imagine they're all going to look the same, but let's check out this other log just to be sure. But yeah, here's a side view of it, really nice. And I'll finish these off camera and get a picture. One thing I will say also, let me show you. Here are the two crock pots that I cooked it in. 
and there's a lot of soap you know on the spatula there's a lot of soap in the crock pot that won't go to waste i'll soak this in hot water to dissolve it and that will do a big sink load of dirty dishes yes you can use hot process you can use your soap to wash dirty dishes i oftentimes just take leftover bacon grease and add some lye and turn it into soap to wash dishes so all of this stuck in the crock pots will not go to waste and that is what i have for this week so as always thanks for watching everybody stay safe take good care of yourselves and be blessed and i'll see you next week bye everybody